What's going on, guys? NLF Home of Football Culture, Episode Three. Let's talk some footy. Do it again. All right. So, guys, today we're going to start off with the Premier League. So, is the Premier League losing its competitiveness? Nope. Terrible argument. <laughs> nope. Right off the bat, no. No, I don't think so. Um, I just think it has a very good team in it. It's a little weird though that first place is so far ahead of the lot, though. Like, I get it. They're a good team, but in a competitive league, they shouldn't be that far ahead well, at I mean, this point in the season. You look at that, that's like one 13 point cap. Everything else is pretty close to the whole table, but you have to also factor in that I don't know if it's the same with the Serie A, but games played are all over the place in the Prem. Right, that like is you'll fair. see, I think someone has 23. His teams are 22, 21, 20, 19. Burnley has like 17 games played. All right, but looking at, looking at the difference between first and second place, you have Man City with 56, with 22 games played. And Liverpool, 21 games played and 45 points. So they could bring it to eight, an eight point. And it's still a big gap. And Tottenham have two Tot- or three games. Tot- Tot- yeah, I know if Tottenham was they, they had a lot of players out for yeah. this COVID and stuff like the that. Third, that's a big gap, yeah. The third to eight, eight place, is that's the where the stretch of uh, like competitiveness it's, is? Yeah, it's close. I mean, that's where it is for most leagues. Yeah. And like that's where you're fine for the European. But country. I feel like in the Prem recently, the past three, four years, it's been well, Man City's 10 points, good. 15 uh-huh. points. And I'm not every well the past few seasons it's been between Liverpool and City for the most part for the title right. with Chelsea here and there, but I don't think it's losing its competitiveness. I don't think that's the right word for it. Do you think that instead of losing its competitiveness you have one star team compared to Because yeah, well that argument is it, you're not saying the league is losing competitiveness, you're saying that one team is just the it out. Yeah, so it's yeah, not really it's not really competitiveness is the right word to use. They're just Man City is like hard to beat, like the the way they play. So at this point, do you think uh, first place is already gifted to Man City? Or? I mean, you could imagine, yeah. Like Liverpool, if they win, they're only eight points off, and I don't really see them losing Man City the league. Well, I don't know, if Pete, if you have any opinions on that. I mean, I don't think it's gifted, but I think that Manchester City is going to win for sure. I think 13 points is a big gap. Even if Liverpool wins, that's, that's what, 10, 10 points away? They'll be eight points if eight Liverpool points. wins and matches their games. Yeah, they're, 11, they're 11 points. I don't think it's out of the, the no. reach for anyone to compete, but it's it's definitely in Man City's favor. That's what a Prem so, fan would say. I know. It's only 13 mm-hmm. points. That's like three or four games, and season just up for about 40 miles. Right. So. You never know, though, too, because, like, let's say a COVID strike hits Man City and a lot of their good players are out, then what? Do you see them slipping up that bad, though? They're getting Mars back because right, now that Algier went down. I don't know. I mean, also, if you look at it too, I'm looking at it right now, City is 19 points ahead of West Ham, who are in fourth. That's a big gap. Like, objectively, that, that's a big gap. And I, like, I guess it is competitive, but the problem is when you're looking at competitiveness, like, it's nice for the middle of the like, table to be competitive, but really, what matters? The top six, right? Because those are the European spots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we look at when I guess we deem competitive, like, yeah, you want it to be competitive from top to bottom, but realistically, you're going to have your bad teams. It's, yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, well, it's pretty competitive. Two to five. For the most part. Yeah. So he's just an outlier. He's just that good. I mean, it's everyone's great. competing for that fourth place spot. I mean, the third place, honestly. I don't think Chelsea's that safe either. Now they're kind of dropping off. Yeah, yeah. But... I agree. So, uh, speaking of West Ham being fourth, uh, do you think that they could hold on to a Champions League spot, or do you see someone like Tottenham rising through breaking into the Champions League spot? Uh, for me, I think. We had a bit of a lull like the first month, but now we're getting back into form. Jared Bowen is one of the players that's been going off West Ham, so I think if he can keep performing well, Pantone can get back into the rhythm of scoring again, which he struggled with a little bit. I mean, it's going to be tough to compete with the Champions League because City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal's going good again, they're having a good run. So, I mean, I think Europe is possible for West Ham, but Champions League might be a bit of a stretch the end of the season. Yeah, I was going to say, Arsenal does seem like a good team right now. Yeah. Like, a lot of their young players, especially since they're young, too. Yeah. And the fact that they're building confidence, I think the players are only going to get better and better and better. So, like like we said, the, the fourth place spot is definitely up for grabs, 110%. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Just stay in it? I mean, I don't know. I was looking at Tottenham's schedule, and they got some tough games, too, because I personally thought, just looking at it without looking at who's playing who, I, thought, I think Tottenham's a better team than West Ham. No, but I like West Ham a lot. Yeah, I just think they're a better team. They have some players who are better, but Tottenham plays Chelsea next. Yeah, they play Southampton, then they play Wolves, then City, so it's not that easy for them. Mm-hmm. And even though they have, you know, some games that they uh, need to catch up on, I don't know if they, maybe they will take the lead. I think they'll beat you guys on points when you guys 
get to the same amount of games played, but I don't think the gap will be no, that far, you know. And then Arsenal too. I mean, yeah, like Arsenal could take it too. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see. But here's my thing. Let's say Arsenal buy a striker at the end of the window. Like Vlahovic, I know he's been trying to get Vlahovic. Yeah. close. I mean, close, but then he's also close to the Juve as well. But like, if I think Arsenal's one like decent striker away from being, I think top four, like not like guaranteed, but kind of close to it. Yeah. You know and you got final piece of the puzzle. You exactly. Aubameyang, who you went from a player that was a complete striker for them, and captain a, too, a captain. Falling yeah. out of the captaincy and not being able to be that guy that's dependent on getting those goals in the, on the weekend, and uh, then you got Lacazette who can't do it anymore as well. It'll be like the odd game where Lacazette goes off, yeah. but he can't. He's not good at consistently. I think Lacazette still kind of has it in him. I just think that maybe a move is best for him, and I think that Arsenal, like I said, need that one more that striker that they need to bring in to kind of finish the goals, and then once they have that, I think they're good to go. Speaking of strikers, actually, do you guys know uh, Julian Alvarez? Who plays for River Plate? Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. sure he's signing the city. Yeah, yeah. Really? Really? Just gonna be a real, that's a good signing. Yeah, and then but then they're gonna leave him on loan with River Plate. Good. I, yeah, that, I season, think that's smart. Which is smart. Yeah, I think that's smart. He's probably not gonna get regular game time there. I mean, they never played with a striker anyway, so yeah, they haven't figured out. They they I'm sure he will. In 2021, he's played 35 matches, 20 goals, 12 assists. Oh, it's he's almost a goal good. contribution oh, yeah. a game. That's really good. Yeah, and I know he, he's, he's got. I mean, in that league too. True, yeah, you gotta like, you wait and see. But I imagine right. He's a young kid, probably too. I you would have to see how he's gonna play under Pep because, like you said, he likes his tactics the way it is. Yeah. I actually saw this video today. It was uh, Henri talking about his time uh, with Pep at Barcelona, mm -hmm. and he started. He said he started shifting out to the wing, and he told Pep stay. Uh, he told Henri stay as a striker, stay as a striker. So he shifted out wide, and he actually scored. Mm -hmm. playing as almost like a left winger mm -hmm. and he took him off he said i didn't tell you to do that and so you could tell that he clearly like, wants yeah, it. even if it happened yeah, worse, yeah, he still yeah. Him away. yeah i mean that's how managers will be so stick with everything um speaking of fourth place again manchester united still fighting for a spot do you think ralph ragnick will will get a full contract at the end of the year or no hey uh, what, do you, what do you think uh, I'm gonna go with no. I don't, think, I don't so. think he can manage egos. There's a lot of egos on Manchester United. Yeah. We talked about this last time, like like Ronaldo, but you got Bruno. Young too. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is, did you hear the whole thing about how um, Ronaldo was like trying to give like I think Greenwood was the one that they were like hinting at. They didn't say any names, but like he was trying to give advice to the young players, and they just would like ignore it. Yeah, I saw that. Like, Ronaldo doesn't know what he's doing. He said that kids nowadays like take it as an insult. Yeah, yeah. Like, they just don't listen to. Him. Ronaldo, one of the greatest players of all time, giving you advice. Like, I don't did, know why you give that up. Did you guys see at the weekend? Uh, Ragnik took Ronaldo off, mm -hmm. and he's freaking out on the bench. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, as a manager, you have to be able to tell them, like, yo, I'm the manager. You're right. the player at the end of the day. You know what I mean? I'm, let me do my job. You do your yeah. job, and then mm -hmm. we'll have no uh, problem. I actually, Pete brings up a good point. I think the problem in sports a lot, whether you look at basketball, football, and by football I mean American football. A common blame is the coach, and yeah, there's times where the coach is at fault, but you, it, they're just the common scapegoat, and it's not always fair. Like, no. I'm not going to lie, I don't know many coaches in the world who get that United roster and are doing well with it. And I think they have good players, but the team just doesn't mesh well. No, you know, and it takes time. Yeah. Like, you can't have a manager come in for half a season and evaluate him off of that. He needs time to implement a system. you got to give him two seasons, maybe three seasons. And if it doesn't work, yeah, they got to move. But like, some, of the, some of the moves he has made so far have worked out for him. He took, took off Ronaldo in that game, put on Rashford, and Rashford scored. Mm -hmm. yeah. He started uh, Alanga, the, the young young yeah. player, yeah. and he scored. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, they know they're doing for the most part, but they, uh, they are like the scapegoats. At the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I agree, and I think it's unfair. Like, yeah, coaches deserve blame sometimes, but I don't think well, it's they can always do is, right. Say do this, and if they don't do it. Then well, True. Yeah, yeah, if it's not working, it's not working. Than that, and then they get mad. Gonna, yeah, then they, the next game is going to do the same stuff anyway. Yeah. So, and we got uh, Aston Villa, who have just signed Coutinho yeah. and Lucas Digne. Yeah. Big, big, uh, big signs. Big signs for them. Yeah, I agree. No, for sure. Do you think they're down this one down? I think they yeah, I think they're, yeah, I think they're gonna get Suarez. That'd be a I huge think, pick I'm thinking at the end of the season. I could have swore I wrote I read something that they were gonna try to sign him for his contract expires. I think that's 
well, yeah, expiring in the summer. Suarez so. is like not re-signing without it. No, yeah. They've been offering him. Which is kind of cool because Stevie G manages them. He's trying to get all the boys back together. Yeah, yeah pull and the band uh, back together. Yeah, yeah. has some filler pool. And the first game that uh, Coutinho got in, he created an assist and a goal. So. And that happened in 14 minutes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Imagine what he can do the rest of the season. And yeah. we're talking about these signings too, but a really underrated signing is Luka Kinkia yeah. from yeah. Everton for 20 oh, yeah. million. That's He's a quality yeah. left back. Yeah, no, that's good. For Everton, he was like, when they first signed him from where Bar signed him, he, yeah. he was their best player for two, year, two yeah. years at least. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's your left back. You know what I mean? And that's and a big loss for Everton because they're struggling too. Yeah, yeah they were struggling like that. that. Uh-huh. Exactly. And you know what's funny too? They actually. They could have sold Richarlson to Barcelona for a lot of money. Yeah. Like a while ago, no? I wonder how he's been doing. Do you know? Because I personally don't. He's scored yeah, 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 he's, he's, he's probably there. one of the better players. I haven't been watching Everton that much. but Here's my thing. I don't think Everton should have sold him, and I'll tell you why. Because once you have a player like that who's going to stay at the club. Vigne? No, no, no. Richarlison. Oh. If he's going to stay at the club, if he's going to score goals for you in big moments, which he does for Everton, I don't – I mean – yeah, there's a price on everything, but at the end of the day, you kind of have to keep those, especially Everton, they have to keep those players that are going to keep them in the mid-table at least. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's say they lose their, their star number nine, then I, they, I can promise you they're going to drop off in the table even more than they're dropping off right now. Yeah, true. A problem with Everton, too, is they made some good sales. Like, they obviously sold Lukaku back when they had him. Yeah. Some other players, too. They've done really bad with spending that money. Like they, they, like, who have they picked up? Picked up a washed up Hamas? They picked, I mean, Hamas is still no, good. Hamas was good that Hamas was though. good. Well, yeah, for the first year. It's not yeah. even that. It's just like, you know, I, I personally so, uh, believe um, that. He's not much? I mean, he was a beast in the city. He goes yeah. to the Premier League. Who? Can't notice him. Alan? Alan. Oh, Alan Alan was a good, yeah, he was a good player, yeah. But I don't know if he's done enough for Everton. You can't notice him in the Premier League. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's also just one player. It's kind of tough right. to try to make that big of an impact, you know? They picked up Gary Mina. I think he was, he was a good defender. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's fine. I would have said so. And then that's it. Actually. They just fell off. So. Yeah. So bringing back to, we're talking about overrated, underrated players. How do we got, who do we say is the most overrated player so far this season? In the Premier League. I don't know, honestly. I need some time to think. Got beat. Uh, most overrated player in the like, Premier League? Are we saying like, uh, like a, the performance so far has been like. Oh, I do want to start. Yeah. yeah. Jack Grealish. I would say Lukaku oh, in terms God. of like what he's expected, what's expected of him and what he's been doing. He he's been I'm going to go with Harry Kane. Ooh, Ooh, because, interesting. Like, I know Conte wants, wanted him to stay. That was kind of one of the main reasons he took the job. But I think that Harry Kane compared to his prior seasons of him scoring all these goals mm-hmm. and he's in like kind of a rut right now. I mean, he scored yeah, the other day. Game against that right. game was crazy, by the way. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that Tottenham fucking Leicester game. Yeah, that was oh, that was a great game. Go on, go to, he's going. Yeah. 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 Uh, I I'm gonna go Jorginho. I love you, Jorginho, but this season you've been dumb. seriously. He's yeah. been really? Dumb. He's been dumb. I'm surprised. I agree with you. I'm surprised you say I that. I have to. I have to say it. Yeah. yeah. Chelsea's overrated. Yeah. Mason Mount's overrated too, Mike. Mike, yeah, it's so overrated. Overrated. So overrated. I'm thinking it's not yeah. so overrated. You, you'll say that too, second pick? I, yeah. I'm going to also no, he's agree on that notion. Yeah. Mount's had a good season. So, the most underrated player so far. Who's having a cracking season that we haven't really I'm talked about? I'm saying because it's my team, but I'm saying Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen. He's, uh, he's a good young player. He's hungry for goals, hungry to score. He's having a good season. And not many people know his name, but they're going to start to know his name, I think. Skip me. I need some time to think about this. I mean, honestly... I don't think, like, I obviously West Ham's a good team. <clears throat> they don't get, like, enough exposure, like, as much as United does. Like, people, like, oh, this guy's been balling for West Ham. But I think Jared Bowen, honestly, has been really underrated this season. Like, yeah. I've watched him play. He's a good player. Yeah, he's quick. And I don't really fancy players from the print, but he's a, he's a very good player. I'm very impressed what he's doing for West Ham, so I agree with you. I'm liking uh, Diogo Jota. I don't Is think the whole season. And, uh... I don't think everyone's like. I think he's more rated. I, I, I know you're trying to say. Yeah, that. I think yeah. he still is a little bit underrated. I agree with that. I think he's I'm a really, really, really good player. I, 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 yeah, he is. I'm going to go with Smith Rowe. Oh, oh, I was thinking I Smith Rowe. He nice is shot. so fire, dude. Nice he can play on the left, he can play as a cam, he's number 10, you know what I mean? I love that player. I think he's amazing. Because you like that Dubala player. Yeah, exactly. They like everywhere the utility guy. Yeah, exactly. That's a good shot. So let's move on to the better league. 
<laughs> We're going into the Saturday. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. We have to do so, it. So far in the past five months, we have seven coaches who have been sacked. Shevchenko being the one, one of the most recent ones. Uh, do you think it's a bad move for some legends to take on a managerial role for some clubs? Um, I personally, I don't necessarily agree or disagree with that statement because if you look at when Pirlo first came into coaching, he didn't do that yet. And he didn't do that because he wasn't going to coach the Primavera team. For he, did, he did for a week. A we okay. So he was coaching for one week and then immediately it's like, okay, go coach Juve with Ronaldo, Dybala, like we want, we expect to win a Champions League or at least compete. Like you can't throw a coach into that. Right. Shevchenko, on the other hand, he was coaching Ukraine. And he did well with them, and then you know he was where he was with Genoa, correct? Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out, and that's the end of the story. If you just gotta give coaches like a chance, if they don't have a chance to get thrown into it, it's not that easy. You're right. You know. I agree. I, I think. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just gonna say like they just get way too much stick. All of a sudden, yeah, yeah. you give them five, six games show what they got you don't know how long it's going to take them to find their form so all right what i was going to say is i think that um legends taking over big clubs is a good thing but i think they need to start at a, a like a lower end club to get the experience because yeah. like i'm going to relate this back to lampard where he jumped right into chelsea and had he have done what like gerard did and went to like a lower end club with rangers i think and gerard did so well at rangers and now he's at villa so he's made the step up and he's performing again and he's shown that he can do it I think all they need, all they need is like a season or two at like a lower end club yeah. to feel it out how how to manage. If they do well with that, then they can make the jump into a, a first league team. And then and it's a shame too because it really puts a tamper on their name. It does. You could, yeah. you could see like a player like Pirlo. You talk about him as much as you want, <laughs> but then you say, oh, look what he did at Juventus. Yeah. You're, you're kind of taking away his knowledge from the game. Which right. Suck. I also agree with Gutsen said. I, th I think they do need that little little curve, like, like trial. Yeah, a little trial run almost, just to like kind of get to see. Do they like it? Yeah. Not even like. Yeah, they may not even like it. Yeah, they may not even like it. And then yeah. next thing you know, you're thrown into Juve, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's like literally throwing somebody in the fire and being like, "Good luck." You know what I mean? Like, look at, for example, I know Barcelona's not doing that good, that good in the league, but Xavi also. Where do you go manage again? South. He South, was, South, he was, he was in Saudi Arabia with some. And then you yeah. step up to Barca. Now I know they're not like I said, they're not doing that good in the league, right. but now you have younger players scoring goals and stuff like that. And obviously, and. Obviously, it's all about wins and losses, whatever. But at the same time, it's kind of about success that kind of stays on for like multiple years. Mm -hmm. So now you're starting to grow players. Xavi started to put players in the right spots. Now these younger players start to build confidence. Might might not be good this year. Might not even be good next mm -hmm. year. Well, let's say the year after that. Now you have a few quality starters in your team mm -hmm. that you kind of didn't have beforehand because they didn't have the recognition or the play time or whatever. Yeah. So on top of your point, Pete. I know Zidane, obviously world class footballer, right? When he came into Real Madrid as a coach, do you see the team he had? Oh yeah. He no. won obviously he won the Champions League stuff, but like with that kind of team one of the best teams ever. Yeah, won. of course. Ronaldo, we kind of expect that, right? Ronaldo carried carried. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Ronaldo was yes, Ronaldo's very good, but he didn't carry them. But anyways, when Ronaldo left and the team diminished, what happened? Was he able to take control of everything? Was he able to propel them always to win a Champions League? No. No. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, it, it's always, it's the situation for coaches. If you're in in a good situation, then that's yeah, where you most likely will succeed. Yeah, yeah. That's so, fair. we talked about uh, one of the hottest names before in Serie A, uh, Vlavic. Uh, right now, I think you got a player like that on your team. It's a shame that Fiorentina can't hold on to him because uh, they're a smaller club in, in world football right now. I wouldn't now. say smaller, but compared to what yeah, they compared used to be. To, yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's a shame that they have to let him go, but hopefully they do get some money out of it. Uh, where do you think he's going to end up? The Prem? Stay in Serie A? I don't know. I mean, so, what I've seen a lot of is a lot of Premier League, Premier League teams have called up to him and been like, yeah, we'll, all you, we'll offer you this much, yada, 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 but he does want to stay in Italy. But here's my thing. He's definitely going to have to take a pay cut if he wants to stay in yes. Italy. And, I mean, Premier League is a lot more exposure just because it's well, more well known. So that's the yeah. Continue. Here we go. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I think I could definitely see him going to Arsenal. I don't mean, but at the same time, that. I could also see him going to Juve because I saw them <laughs> maybe doing like a swap deal. Won't oh, happen. Yeah, but but, I, but my main guess is Arsenal. Personally, I personally think he will go to Palermo and join them in City Chi and propel them <laughs> back to City. I wish, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's gonna be making what two nickels a day. So. 
with Vlahovic, there's obviously these rumors, right? I don't think we'll ever really be able to know. Like, I don't think it's like, like we could say, oh, these reports about Juve, oh, Arsenal. He could end up with Spurs. He could have a, end up at Inter, Milan. He could end up anywhere. He could go to Barcelona in two years. Real Madrid. Guaranteed, he's leaving. Like so his, his contract. And he's, he's not going to be And it's in January. He's leaving. Or is it going to be? It could be a summer. It could be a summer transfer, but if they want to get the most money out of him, they should. They would do yeah. that. I uh, think Vlahovic should go to Milan, though. I think it's perfect, and not biased. Seriously, we need a striker, right? You have two. Two grandpas. <laughs> two stri- a striker that's not a grandpa. I love you, Ibra and Giroud. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> right? But Milan is a good team right now, right? To be a great team, we need that striker. If we have that clinical striker, that's how we can beat Inter for the Scudetto, you know? Because we're simply just not good enough. I know we're in second place. But we're not good enough to win a Scudetto with our current roster. I don't think anyone in the Serie A is really touching Inter right now in, for- in, in terms of squad depth and, and, and everything like that. I mean, Napoli had them. Napoli was not first for a little bit, but then they did their classic. I'm talking about as, as far as player <laughs> by player, like who's better individually. Oh, like, sure. They, Inter blows everyone. Oh, yeah. Their, their backups are... And, and, and on the field, you can tell yeah. there's just a huge jump in level of like players at Inter. Their backups are better than some starters yeah. on other teams. Like, uh, half of their backups would start on, like, a team like Salerno and Dalla Venezia. You know what I'm saying? would be a star anywhere else. I wish Milan had Correa. Anywhere He's a else. beast. Do you think Inter has what it takes to get in trouble this year? No. As in a trouble? The Champions League, yeah. No. I don't think they can beat the Champions League. I, I, they're a good team, but the problem is it's just those teams in England, there's too much money and they have too much talent. So they have that competitive advantage. They play against Roma in the next round of Coppa Italia. Mm-hmm. I could see them winning Coppa Italia. Yeah. And I could see them winning the league. The Champions League, I feel like, is a whole different animal. They're Just playing Liverpool, Liverpool, too. They're yeah. playing Liverpool. Oh, yeah, and then, like, yeah. after that, like, let's say they go against Bayern. You think they can beat back in the mm-hmm. likes? Like, let's say something like that. Because you never know the draw. You've you seen know? crazy stuff happen. Yeah. Yeah. If they matched up against Real Madrid, Real Madrid take that game? Right now, I think. I don't I think, think so. I think Real Madrid. Madrid I think the form that Real Madrid is in is, is pretty insane. I don't know. True, but Champions League's in, Inter's played well. Champions League's a different you get beast. Benzo as Pete there said, flying there. We've seen Galatasaray beat big teams where they had Felipe Melo, drunk by Schneider, who were all not in their primes. Right. You know, those are still big names, though. You big got, names, yeah, of course. Ajax, who they don't really have. Uh, they didn't have big names until. They, you Dude, they were lose. like a few minutes away from the Champions League final until right. Lucas Mora scored that crazy yeah. goal. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Um, so, will Juventus have enough to sneak into the top four, do you guys think? You, I'll let you start with this place one. This is your club. You guys in fifth. Can we bring up the table right, right behind, yeah, Team right line? behind Atalanta. Um, and they, Atalanta has a game in hand. Here's my thing. You guys have been playing really well recently. But I go ahead, it, say it. it. But it's say it, man. I don't know if they if they take fourth. Mm. Uh, Jesus, I forget. Inter has that really game in hand too. Over well, us. here's my thing. Because uh, Fiorentina's in. Points. I mean, here's my thing. Fiorentina's in what sixth, right? UA's in fifth. Atlanta's in fourth. I think that if Fiorentina sells Vlahovic. There you go. That won't happen. I think everyone below them, I don't think. Listen, it's, look I at, think it's more of a fight between. Look at these next and matches that, that you very kind of look at this. We got Milan at the weekend, right? I mean, yeah. okay. Let's say, let's just say Juve takes three points against Milan. I, okay. Propels them to beat Atalanta. Okay, well, sure. I mean, propels them to go past Atalanta. Mm-hmm. They take three points against Verona, hopefully. Then a Coppa Italia matchup. And then we play the team that we have to beat out for fourth place. So they're, the, way, the games that, uh, the way it's set up, they're in good standing to, to go into that fourth place. Very true, but I want you to look at the date of those three games. Not the Milan game, because that's far further. You got February 6th, February 9th, and February 13th. Not a lot of time. That's to not a lot of time to prepare for those games. And those are decent teams. For any of you who know Serie A, Sassuolo is a solid team. They beat you guys early in the season. Heartbreaking game for you guys. Atlanta's really good, too. And Verona's... God, they, they won today. They won today. Two one. Dude, their trio has been like phenomenal. Uh, Barak, Barak, Barak has been. Uh, yeah, he's been, he's been crazy. crazy. Dude, I, I mean, honestly, like I said, I think Juve has a lot of good players. I like Allegri. Mm-hmm. I don't think personally that he was the best person to sign back. Agree. Yeah. That's my thing. And I don't think that, unfortunately, that Juve takes fourth this year. 
I still think that they're missing that that number nine, kind of like the same problem yeah, that Arsenal. Matata's got it up there. <laughs> Dude, Morata can go. Never. It he sucks because the trash. first time that we yeah, signed Morata, jump, just jump just, just what he is. the first time we signed Morata, we really looked at him like, wow, this guy could be a like, potential like a post great player. striker yeah. in the rest of his career. And now you bring him back to the club and he has just been awful. Missing sitters from five yards out. It's, it's well, well, here's my thing. I don't think Morata's a true number nine, though. No. Where would you play him? Well, he left played back. kind of like a... <laughs> yeah, maybe at center back. Center back. Yeah. Left yeah. bench, I think, maybe. No, but he played, but he was playing well. He kind of played on the wing type as well for Juve. Would go he's off the wing more. Wing, huh? He's just clunky. You would, the way he dribbles, I feel like he's going to dribble out of bounds every time he touches the ball. I think dribbling is honestly one of his best things. I think oh shooting God, is one of his no, worst. One thing I do want to say, though, too, in Morata's defense is, remember when Ru- uh, Juve was losing Roma 3-1? to one? He came out. He changed the game. He did. He yeah. seriously did. He did. So he's. I don't think he's horrible. He's just not playing well for you guys. There's points where I'm like, wow, this guy could really be a game changer. Yeah. And then there's points where I'm like, please get him off the field. I never want to see him again. No, I yeah. agree. He should. He should be a substitute for you guys. I yeah. think. Yeah. And as a substitute, I don't mean like last five minutes of the game. I mean like 20 minutes, 25, 50 minutes. Fair. Yeah, that's yeah. a fair assessment. Um, now, I we're gonna go back to overrated player uh, for the study. Most overrated. Most overrated. I know my answer. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I was just about to say that. Love the guy. Great striker. I have his book. I'm a huge fan of him. The problem with him is that 4-3-3, all these accounts posted, Zlatan scored again. Zlatan saves Milan in the last minute. The problem with Zlatan Ibrahimovic is he does not run. I was just about to say And I get it. He's a lazy guy. Listen, listen, he's 40, okay? So he's had the wear and tear. He's played, he scored in, I'm pretty sure, 23 consecutive years professionally. And... He doesn't have good performances for us. He tries these back heels, these like, all this cheeky stuff. It doesn't work for us. And we need like a younger presence, more energetic. That's why Vlahovic would be perfect. It's not happening. It probably won't happen. But <laughs> it's trying to speak it into existence. It's also it's not, not, he's also not going not to listening. Juve. They're not listening. He's not going they're to Juve. Not Nobody wants to go to Juve. Go <laughs> ahead, Pete. Do you also agree with me about Ibra? I think, yeah, Ibra's definitely up there for me as well because like, like you said, like I, I'll watch Milan games, and they're on the counter, and if he if it's like a forty meter spread for him, he's like, yeah, that's it. I'm not doing that. Like, but if he happens to be in the box and someone starts running down the wings, like, all right, I'll just stay. You you watch. He doesn't even move to get on side. Yeah, yeah. He'll wait for the whole defense yeah. to put him on side, yeah. and then he'll start. And moving. then he'll complain. Yeah, he'll complain when he's off sides yeah, know. that they didn't pass the ball earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I I think I'm gonna. But that's a good shot. Well, you're gonna go agree on Ibra. Yeah. What do you think, though? Um, overrated player. Uh, I didn't. I honestly didn't give him much thought yet. Could, yeah. I mean, I I don't watch it enough to know, but I don't know if overrated is the right word for Rabio. I just don't think he's good. Okay. Yeah. 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 I like. I don't that. think he's very good. I think Rabio's lost all of his all of his like. It, what like, he had. What he had. It's so, crazy though. He was a wonder kid at PSG. People were saying he's going to be one of the next best midfielders, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, when you had Mbappe, Neymar, in front no. of Di Maria, and then True. it's like. But Pete, yeah, this was also like five years ago, four years ago. This wasn't like Mbappe now. Like, Mbappe was still good when he first got to PSG, still. but. Yeah. I mean, you know. I'm going to say Milinkovic Savage. Oh, that is a hot take. That tank. is hot. That is a hot take. I only say that because I've seen Malinkovic Savage in the past couple of years perform balls to the wall. The guy's every game insane. Now you got a player like that. He was rotting on a Lazio bench. He doesn't care. I feel like none of his performances have been. Malinkovic like, Savage, if you hear this, don't go to Juve. They don't want you. Here's Cut him a lot. Here's my. And he didn't go to Juve when he could. So. <laughs> Here's my thing. Do you think Inzaghi leaving kind of hurt him a little bit? Obviously. So you think that he should kind of start start for that move to enter or what? He should have left years ago. No, he should go to Milan. I think AC Milan. But I do think I do think his performance is Milan. Ever. If you're listening to this, just get just buy everybody. Sign of Vlaovic. Just Malik Malik if you're walking down the street. Sign just have head of a big for real. <laughs> um, no, but underrated players. Now I'm gonna start with this one because. I gotta represent. Oh, uh, like, here we go. Bernadeschi. I was actually. I that. would hate on Berna every season for the past five years again, but this year, no joke, the guy's playing with balls of steel. He goes into every game, every minute that he has, 
Did you argue Quadrado's underrated or not? Underrated. I, I do one think... One of the most underrated players on Juventus and in the league. I think maybe one of the most underrated outside backs in the world. I think he's up there. Yeah. I seriously I do. I think he's underrated. He is. Yes, he is. He is very you know, underrated. Who talks about him? Besides, besides yeah. Serie A fans. If I look at you, One man. person says, who's the best right back in the world? No, Trent. Jacques Ancelo. Hakimi. Hakimi. Yeah, who's saying Jacques Ancelo? Quadrado, Quadrado is never That's there. Fair. Never there. That's fair. I'll give you that. And oh, wait. Yeah. Can, I, can I go one more for the uh, overrated? Good. Alexandra. That dude belongs... Oh, uh, he cut. He mu- he muffed it for you guys in the really finals. Did, he is trash. Yeah. All right, back yeah. to the underrated. I'm sorry, I said it kind of. No, go ahead. I said Bernadeschi. I agree with that. Track I was, I was you stick with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, He's had some highlights. Underrated. What do you think here, Luca? You got out anybody? Uh, I'm gonna no. I, don't, I think Teo Hernandez is overrated. I will say that. <laughs> really? Oh, for sure. All right, I'll stick with Milano with this one. I have a f- two. Um, who do you guys think is more underrated, Tonali or Rafael Leal? Leal, hundred ten percent. Okay, perfect. He's a baller. That kid, and oh, he's, he's not gonna be. I don't know if he'll ever be this good, but he has like superstar potential. Oh, yeah. Like maybe not as good as Mbappe. Yeah. Unreal. No, seriously, he is so good on the so good. wing. When he comes on the pitch, it changes. Yeah. He creates so many chances. Literally, he'll do a step over, cut to the left, and then he's gone. He plays with confidence, and you know. You remember two seasons ago, he was a little like he was lazy, yeah, lazy. and now he hustles more. That's yeah. perfect. That mindset, if he gets it right, he will be phenomenal. I stand by that. Yeah. Oh, Gia, who's the guy on Bologna that I love? What's his name? I'm blanking. Or Salim? No. <clears throat> uh, Barrow? Yeah, Barrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's underrated. I mean, he's, been, underrated. he's been underrated in the Serie A for, for quite a while. But he's he, my underrated player. Beast. I like that. Beast. Don't right. put him on a big club. You watch what he does. You heard it here first. Um, shifting back to Europe in total. Uh, European Golden Boot. Throw out the top five leagues. We got Lewandowski with 23 goals in 19 games played. That's crazy. Benzema, 17 goals in 20 games played. Immobile, 17 goals in 18 games played. Lauwich, 17 goals in 21 games played. Ahmed Salah, 16 goals, 20 games played, and Jonathan David, 12 goals, 21 games played. What do you see, David? I'll rule out Jonathan David right away. Good young talent, but that's way too low. He's, he's not putting the goals that Lewandowski has. Yeah. I think Lewandowski takes it. I mean, it's a bonus league, and it's pretty easy to score, clearly, and he's the best striker in the world, so I don't see him not scoring more goals. Quick question for you guys. Do you guys think, obviously, the Bundesliga's not the best league. We can all agree on that, right? Do you think he makes it look easier than it actually is? Him and Holland. Make it look easier than it actually is. Probably, right? Yeah. yeah. Go the, now. Bro, the, the goals that Holland scores, it looks like he's not trying. You want to be honest with you? I'm going to go with now. Why go watch you know? Go watch a Bundesliga game. Come on. Look at The I'm defending not, is awful. It's horrendous. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I think so you're like, trying to say that it's good. No, it's horrendous. That's why I don't think they make it look easier. I just think it's genuinely easier to score in that league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, if you go watch the games, they're, it's very, like... They're fun games to watch, don't get me wrong, but the reason why is just <coughs> the defending in that league is just not good attack. at all. Yeah. It's yeah. just counter, 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 counter. It's like a C Tech version of the, the Premier League. The Premier League's kinda like that. It's, it's very not, fast paced. Yeah, it's very fast paced, but the Premier League you actually have good defenders, so that's why it's not like a blowout every game. If you go watch a Bundesliga game, it's a lot of games that are like three two, four two, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. so but personally Go ahead, go ahead. Personally, I think who should win the Golden Boot is Benzema. I think Benzema. You think he's gonna overtake Lewandowski? I mean, I just think that he should is get it, it. Is it who should get it or who is gonna get it? Is that what we're saying? I, who's going to get it? Who do you think? Okay, well, Lewandowski's probably yeah. gonna get it, but I think Benzema should get it. Okay, but my thing is, is like, all right, Benzema may be a little bit more important to Real Madrid than Lewandowski is. I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but Lewandowski's had one game played less, and he has six more goals. So oh, I think it, it it's kind of hard to discredit the man who's played a game less and scored six more right now, goals. Both of, both of the players have teams, uh, midfielders that are giving them service like like it's not. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. You got uh, Modric and Cruz playing like they're still 21 years old. So mm-hmm. Yeah, but here's my thing. When when Real Madrid was struggling, Benzema was the only one that you could, I'll you give could you tell. That. I'll give you that. Was the, that, the best player there by far. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's and then the lights. And when they're when they're big, when they're playing really well, he had, 
the thing about Benzema, that's why this is why he's a one of a kind player. If you need him to be your number nine, go score every game, he can do that for you. Mm-hmm. If you have like Ronaldo, Bale at the time when he was playing really well, he could also kind of just relax and be that not like a utility player, but brings everybody together in the attack as well. Yeah. I agree with you, Pete. Honestly, Benzema has always been a quality player. He's getting more so the recognition he deserves now because people are realizing kind of how good he is, better than he was before. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's not who's more crucial to the team. And Real Madrid's doing a lot better this season. So I don't, like, I agree with what you're saying, but I just don't think that that applies to this specific day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, think I, I, could see, I could see Immobile or Vlaovic creeping up the top. Not just because they're in Serie A. I think Blavich just, he's a good poacher. He can score goals from anywhere. But here's my thing. What if he leaves, he goes to a new team, right? Then what? He's got to kind of get a little bit adjusted into the system there. Especially if he goes to a different league. True. Yeah. Or different place. The thing with Blavich, though, too, he's 41 years old, correct? Mm-hmm. He's a hard worker. Oh, yeah. He is, like... He's well, one of old-style players. Marco's uh, yeah. father was scouting... No, what was he doing with Fiorentino? Oh, he was just he was just watching them. Yeah, he was watching them, and he would always say this kid is the first yeah. one to show up to training. Yeah. Last one to leave. And he's 21 years old, too. He's got that killer mentality at this age. That, That's good, though. You can't really teach that. You go watch, like, like when they're on, when they're getting, like, the counter against them. He busts his ass to get back there. Good. And, like, because defense starts from the that. top... Top down, you know what I mean? And you make sure that that happens from the top down. You think Salah could work his way up uh, to those numbers or no? I mean, he's playing he's at 16. He's, at a, he's in AFCON right now. Yeah, so I don't think so, no. Uh, I think each of them won't go. I think he can. I think, well, I mean, if you look, it's Lewandowski's six ahead, and then you got like 17, 17, 17, 16. And then he's so played less games than some of them, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, mean, I don't think Salah can creep up on being... I don't think he can win it, but I think he can get second place. Any of those players could get second place. Yeah. Um, you know what I actually want to ask you guys? Quick um, question. Do you guys think that Holland is head and shoulders above Vlahovic as a striker? And I, I, feel Pete, like I want to start with you. I want to go, I want to go come around this way. I want to start with you. Head and shoulders above Vlahovic. So Vlahovic is probably valued at like, what, 70, 80 million right now? I think it's 70 million okay. is what they want. What is Holland valued at? Probably almost double that, if not double. Something. I'm just like, okay, do you, think, 110, do you think the gap is worth it? No. I agree. I don't 110%. Think, I, don't, I think you give them more time, they'll see how good Vlahovic is like, over the long run. Because uh-huh. he hasn't really had the life of that much. People are just now starting to see how good he is. Yeah. Well, here's my thing. Okay, let's say you, bought, you buy Vlahovic for $70 million. You have an extra $50 million for the gap to buy True. a very decent, let's say, midfielder. So in my opinion, it's not worth it to go buy Holland. I mean, yes. He's a very good player. Because Holland could probably come and go up that much more. Whereas Vlahovic is just going to double. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I think they're the same player. For the most part. I think they're the same striker. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. First. I don't know Holland's work ethic, but what I'm hearing about Vlahovic, I prefer somebody like that on my team. I'm not going like, I mean, to... Stri- no, no, true. Come but a striker who's, but, like you said, busting his ass, defending, running back. I love that. Oh, yes. you got to love seeing that when you're... The best man on your team is like working for the team. Nobody's bigger than the team, you know? Yeah. And I'm not saying Holland's like that, but I just think, you know, we know more about yeah. Blahovic in that sense than we do Holland. That's mm-hmm. right. We've seen Holland do a lot though. True. No, I, he's the, great. The time that he has had, which uh-huh. is a short, short spell of time, <clears> but uh, he busts his ass too. So. But also, another thing, real quick, before we go to the next thing. Like we said, like like I said before, the bonus league, there's a lot of goals scored in it as well. Where steady out. In my opinion, at least, I know this might be a little biased, but even Ronaldo said it's the hardest league to score in. So, mm-hmm. if he's scoring a decent amount of goals, True. what is it? 17 goals in 21 games played. If Holland could do that, like go to a big big league and go score there, like decent amount like that, then good for him. But, I don't know, I think they're pretty, I, don't, I wouldn't say head and shoulders, I would no, say it's pretty they're even. pretty even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next, we can look at the FIFA Player of the Year. Uh, winner, Robert Lewandowski. I don't, I don't think we don't have think any... much to say. No, no. No. I think he's he's been deserving for a trophy for so long now. It's it's been ridiculous. He's deserved like two Ballon d'Ors. Yeah. Too. Like at this point, like it's. I feel genuinely bad for the man because of how how well he's played and yeah he gets recognized mm-hmm. by social media and I know media plays a big part in a lot of things but still I mean it's tough. He's still yeah. Messy generation. Yeah. yeah. Well they they robbed him. they robbed him of the Ballon d'Or. I'm saying because Messi won the Ballon d'Or. Oh uh, yeah, well, but yeah, it's, sure. 
but yeah. No, he shouldn't have been. Yeah. No, honestly, he, he should have. Um, he shouldn't have, right? No, he should have. I, I love Messi. Messi did not deserve it this year. I agree. Right. <laughs> Thank you. We already spoke about that. Thank you. This was the first episode. I want to bring it back. Yeah. And uh, just, just to say that he, he did deserve it. That's fine. Um, so we got the FIFA Pro Men's 11. This is the best players of the year. We have uh, John Luigi Donnarumma for PSG. Uh, do you think Edward Mendy deserved it? I knew you were going to say that. I did. I think if Italy didn't win the Euro, Donner was not in the argument at all. Obviously. No, true, yeah, but you also got to look at what he did in the Euro, he, as well as with Milan. He did have the... I forget what he had with Milan. I think he saved the most penalties, maybe. He had the best save rate. And Milan's defense is not the best in the league. But how are you going to go and say if, like, he didn't go do that? What do you mean? You say if he didn't go win the Euro. With I'm saying, like, like how, he, it's crazy how one tournament, like... Well, here's my the thing. Year into... But here's my thing. Go watch those games. Like I like I've been saying. I'm not discrediting. Him. I think he's a very yeah, good. Yeah, no. Donna Ruma is the reason why the, they went yes. that far. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of teams that were putting the pressure on Italy, and and you look at Italy's back line. Yes, they're old, but they're a damn good defense. Yeah, no, we yeah. struggled against Spain. We struggled oh, against Spain at Hebron. When we got to penalties, I, I thought we were. That's it. We were out. Donna Ruma was in back-to-back penalty shootouts. Think about that too. Yeah. And he's a young kid. Yeah, still yeah, young. You know? Yeah, yeah. It takes I a think, lot of him. I think huge stage deserves. too. He doesn't. Do you guys say he's deserved? I do. I, I, I see. I see why you say Mendy because I agree. I think he has an insane. Yeah, Mendy. If you just watch like his, the saves he makes. No, he's I think yeah. Mendy's amazing. The Mendy just that got unlucky sure. with Donnarumma. I think Donnarumma's here. Mendy's not. That, that's that's a fair argument for both sides. No, yes. yeah, I agree. I agree. We have uh, David Alaba. Which I don't understand what I that shout is. That. I, I really don't get why he won it. Oh my god. Ruben Diaz? That's great. great. That's great. Yeah. And Bonucci. How is Bonucci on this list? Yeah. Bonucci. Oh no, my god. Guys, guys. Dude, no, Bonucci, come on. Actually, hold on, hold on. Come on. on. Bonucci. And I'm not even a Juve fan. The tournament that he had at the Euro was insane. I don't care, but Bonucci will never be better than Chiellini. If you're going to put anyone up, just put up Chiellini. should be there. How long is the Euro? One month? Yeah. So I have one month. You can't judge. Well, I can get that. But it which is, is crazy to me. But it's how many games to get to the final? You got the three, four, three in your group. Three in your group. Five, like seven. Or seven eight. games. That you have to be insane in all seven games. Yeah, but what did Bonucci do? Four. Like so that's seven straight games in, in Serie A. Okay. Well, there were some games where I'm sure he didn't play that great. What well, last year? But Bonucci was it amazing in the Serie A last year? Game. Bonucci? I don't think so, no. I thought I think Delin and Chiellini are their two best defenders. Well, Chiellini's been off, on and off being hurt. True, but he's been sure. on and off being hurt. Delin, same thing, he's been kind of on and off being hurt last year. And the, there was a lot of times where Delic last year was kind of like, he, he was either the best defender in the game or invisible. Either way, I don't get the... And uh, Bonucci, I feel like, is no, the most no, consistent defender on their team. The, like that actually plays because Chiellini, like we said again, well, it's listen, I like I like Chiellini one hundred ten percent. I think he's a better defender than Bonucci. Yes, but I think Bonucci doesn't. He hasn't missed that many games. Every game he's played, he hasn't been. I know we, we make fun of Bonucci because he's like kind of like a meme because he messes yeah. up a lot. But he dances around. But I think he's he's, he's gotten a lot better since coming back from Milan, in my opinion. Well, least. I mean, yeah, but do you know why he can't play without Chiellini? Objectively, he was not good at Inter. He was not good with Milan. He's only been good with Juve when Chiellini is his partner. He also plays international games with, guess who? Well, okay. Well, here's my thing. He's a complimentary defender. He's good as a complimentary. He's never going to be your team's best defender. You won't get far with him. He, he's a good cap. When he has the captain's man, he's no, a great cap. No, I, I, sure. I just don't think he's not the number one defender. He's your complimentary piece. You know what I'm saying? I, I still would take Chiellini over Bonucci. Yeah, yes. no, sure. I agree. It's just Bonucci. I don't know why he's on this list. Nah, uh, we can move over to the midfielders. Jorginho, Conte, Kevin De Bruyne. For me, two out of the three don't belong. I, I think Jorginho had a great year, but you have midfielders like Kimmich. You have midfielders like Casemiro, like Fabinho, players who stand out. I think a little bit more in skill and. The, it, um, wait, he's there because of what he's achieved. What he's achieved. Right. Sure. He's yeah. in the Champions League. He won the Euro. Here's my thing though, because Jorginho won. Okay, Champions League, and Chelsea won the league last year. No. no. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did. They won the league last year, and then they, and then they won the Euro. Yeah. But I personally think, even just from the Euro, yes, Jorginho played better during the Euro. But I think it's 
on Inter, but I love it. Deserved it more than Jordan. That's Jordan. a good show. That is very in my good opinion, show. at least. Yeah, I agree. He's. I think Barella's Italy's best defender. Uh, defender, midfielder. I agree too. Yeah. Because he can do. I would say Berardi, but Barella, Barella is probably more. I, I don't want to get here. But yeah. what I'm saying is, Barella does. He can play in the attack. He's the best. In my opinion, he can play box to box, and he can play that kind of sit back holder as well that Jorginho does. So, I think that. But I was a better player than Jorginho because I don't think Jorginho can play both roles. So, Gio, you said two yeah, of the players the don't belong there. You think? Wait, City won last yeah, game? Yeah, I was like, there's not uh, a And you said Jorginho. And I don't think Kevin De Bruyne, bro. I, I don't so, know what the I don't know what the Kevin all, De Bruyne. Uh, no, to all our viewers here, Gio is a avid Kevin De Bruyne hater. Not a hater. Yes, not a hater because, because I know I know Kevin De Bruyne is phenomenal. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know I don't he's like a good player, but I know he's a good player, but. To say world class and all that, you can People throw around world class like no. You don't think the Bruins world class? No. Uh, that's, a, that's a hot take. Do you, I think, do you think Bruno Fernando, Fernandez is? I think they're on the same level. Because no. if you, okay, listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> Hear me out. What are you saying? Can you hear me out? Listen. So you, you look at players 10 years ago, right? And I always use this argument because it makes sense. You look at players 10 years ago, you got Xavi, Iniesta, and Busquets in four, right? And can you compare them to uh, De Bruyne and, and maybe Bruno Fernandes? Two different players. And maybe they're, they're both they're all different, different players. Different play styles, but De Bruyne I'm in terms of level of skill is the like them of our generation. Like he's one of the best midfielders in the world. As they but the, the, the level is not the same, right? Well, here's my it's thing. To so how can we call that world class if it's not world well, class? Has to be, you can't just say uh, world class players existed. You cannot have any. Yeah, world that, world it, it's kind of different. Like maybe it's the midfielders were better yes. there. They were, but like that doesn't mean he can't be world class because he's not as good. That's such a high standard to set. He's always the best. That's why it's world class. class. Listen, yeah, but it's Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, all world class. They also right? all played together. But too. here's my thing. Do you think Busquets could be the reason why Wolfsburg went up, climb up the Bundesliga table? I don't think so. Okay. Same thing. Well, I don't think Iniesta would be the reason as well, or Xavi. It's two different players because also the Bruyne plays in the attack. They, I mean, I also, think, no. I think personally, go watch Be- go watch Belgium play in the Euro. Who was their best player? On top of don't that, don't tell me Lukaku's on the smack in the face. Uh, it was the Bruyne. On top of that, Pete, and second was Jeremy Doku. There was. Did you guys see? <laughs> there's a Euro documentary about Italy. Yeah, I was like. Do you know, there's a little clip. I didn't get to watch it yet. I hope it's good, but Manchi- yeah, uh, Mancini's talking about Belgium, and he's talking about De Bruyne. And he, I don't remember exactly what he says, but he's like, obviously, you know, saying good things about him. Like, don't give him space to dribble. Like, that's the player you focus on. He can make any pass happen. 60 and yards away, 10 yards Like, he's, he's a and piece. And he can make you pay from 30 yards out. True. All right, and uh, if we're talking about that game, he didn't do anything against us, so. Yeah, he did. He didn't do shit. Against us, he he was that's good. Well, I don't remember. He was was the the, every transition to the attack was through him. But Ella had him clamped up. Yes, yeah, clamped up. No, you guys are shot. You guys are shot. No, I I love Barella too. I love Barella too. It's just he's I don't know. He's on something. De Bruyne is just anyone of the hardest working players. Wait, let's move on, please. All right, we'll we'll move on. Ronaldo, Holland. Lewandowski and Messi for, for the, forwards. the forwards. What do you guys think? Uh, is Holland? I mean, yeah, he had a good season, but is that like an outlier, do you think? I would say so. I, I don't even think Ronaldo should be there. You know? I agree. I was thinking that. I don't think Ronaldo should be I there. I think Salah should be in there. Salah should be there. Yeah, yeah, I think, for sure. I think Salah should be in there for Holland. There was another one that I had in mind, but I can't remember who exactly. Benzema? Yeah. Benzema. Benzema. You were you were just rating Benzema before. Benzema could be definitely up there. Yeah, that's for sure. So if you guys is the general consensus here to take out Ronaldo and Holland for Salah Benzema, and Benzema, Benzema, I would do that. I, I yeah, I agree with what that. What did Holland do this year? I mean, he's a great striker, but like, yeah. what did he achieve? I'm not too sure. Not really winning awards, right? He didn't. He didn't, he didn't win a league. He didn't, he didn't win a league. league. He made some yeah. funny videos on Instagram. Yep. So, so, some cool tech files. Yeah, yeah. uh, Besides that, FIFA, FIFA 11 tech files. Yeah. Uh, we got the FIFA Puskas Award. Uh, Lamella, sick goal. Right? Dirty goal. I, I, I was like, I tried to make the crazy. argument the other day. Uh, Harami <laughs> on uh, on Porto with the bicycle kick. I don't know if you guys. Oh uh, yeah, it was sick that. goal. That was a sick goal. But then you you did say you mentioned you know you can't rank bicycle it as a bicycle kick. So you can't just say oh he's got a bike. I agree. I agree. 
as much as they could go. And here's my thing, you know, I think that goal is deserved because you have two defenders on you, and I think just out of instinct. Like the fact that it's so a killer instinct right but, there. Just to but but also you know, perfectly yeah. slotted it. Yeah. 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 Just uh, yeah. Straight, you know, yes. right inside of the post. Like, that's, that's hard. The path, the, took, legs? Yeah, the path yeah. it took to get to the goal was just... Didn't it have a little, like, curve on it? It was, like, it was on the floor. Yeah, it was definitely washed up, but that goal was fine. Yes. Uh, we wanted to make our own NLF team of the year. So let's start off at the goalkeeper for Hold on, real quick. Yeah. Is it going to be like a voting system? Right. Yeah, let's just let's just just let's just pop them out. Like goalkeeper. I mean, think? It's got like it's going to be three to one. Donnarumma. 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 Okay, we so got the Donnarumma. Donnarumma. We'll do three to five, same formation that they did. Yeah. No, we'll do four four three three. Four defenders, three midfielders, three. Okay, I like that. Yeah, okay. We'll okay. Do okay. Four, four two. Okay. So we'll, we'll like Donnarumma. Uh, I'll take Jao Cancelo. I like him. Even though he's more of a right back, because who yeah. do you guys think is a better outside back than Joe Cancelo right now? Paul Drogba. No. Nah, no, I, I can't say Joe. Honestly, seriously, I think Joe Cancelo. You would have made a mistake selling him, by the way. I would, yeah, I would, I would say that. On another right, I'd throw Trent. The FIFA gave it to Hakimi. I don't really know. Yeah, a little questionable. Much. I would say Trent. Money moves. That's the right back. You guys agree with that? Trent. And the thing, like, Trent didn't even play in the Euro. If Trent had played in the Euro, if England had. One it would even finish second, like that would the other half. Right. Okay, defender? Or? We're saying defenders? Yeah, yeah. center back. Is Trent a defender? Is well, he a good defender? On pace. He's not how to defend. Does he know how to defend? He's a modern fullback. <laughs> You're right. That yeah, is what the it. game is. We can give it to Trent, right? Yeah, Whether so we think. Trent, Trent and Stella. The center back's Ruben Diaz. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he's yeah, he's he's there's so many center backs you can argue. You can argue Ruben Diaz. Could, um, I think Koulibaly had an insane Kuhibali Kuhibali had really good Yeah, Koulibaly yeah, definitely needs more recognition. Uh-huh. He's disgusting. Rudiger, for real. That, that's a good shot. Rudiger's a good one. one. Um, I like Thiago Silva. He had a decent year. I wouldn't put him in the I wouldn't put him in the team of the year, but yeah, definitely yeah, more year. recognition. Definitely yeah. wouldn't put anyone on United. Nah, definitely not. Yeah, I wouldn't put anyone on United in the team of the year. Yeah, Veron couldn't. He couldn't lace Ruben Diaz's cleats. I yeah, Veron stinks. Oh, Midfield De Bruyne. Nah, wait. Really. Did we agree on the last center back? So who was the who were the two center backs? Ruben Diaz and uh, the center back. I'd say. I would say. I want to go Lindelof, but he's a he's, he's a United horrible. He's, he's United horrible. horrible. Yeah, he's I would horrible. say Rudiger. Really, Rudiger? Who okay. would you say? I'll take Rudiger. I'm cool with that Simon Kier. <laughs> I, I put Benucci since he was in the uh, whatever team. Yeah, yeah I like right, 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 right. right. okay, We gotta okay. put some Italians in there. Okay. Um, so we got our back four, right? Let's move into our midfield. First center mid. Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne. I think De Bruyne. Do you, know, do you agree with De Bruyne? Barella. Okay, well, Barella's my other one. I, I that's my first. first because De Bruyne's not gonna make it a month, so that's my first. Yes, okay, we, so we've agreed that so, so, uh, Get out of here. Okay, so De Bruyne is definitely one of them. He has our vote. Did we vote Barella as one? I don't nah, he's not going to say it yet, Barella. He's not even top five. I don't know if he makes top five. Does he make it? I don't know. Votes. That's kind of tough. We're at two votes already. I don't know. You know what? We'll throw Barella there for the time because they beat England. Because, England. because they beat England, you know, best of yeah. them. There's two. And then who's the third? I mean, I don't hate that. Modric. I don't need Conte. Conte. You can tell Modric has been aging though. Conte also does the dirty work. Did you guys see that TikTok? It's like Conte didn't have that smile. He wouldn't wouldn't be the boy. No, that's not true. Um, Dude, he sounds like Jojo, I think. He's funny, bro. He's got a funny So, the third one is... I think Modric. Who? Modric. We agree on Conte. I'll take Conte. Okay. Forwards. So, are we doing left winger, striker, right winger? Yes. This This is a hot take, but I'm gonna say Lewandowski. Okay. Yeah, I don't, think I don't think that's a hot take. Okay, okay. left wing. take is ice cold, and I'm going with it. I, I'm, I'm taking your ice cold pick. Left okay. wing? Left wing, Mohamed Salah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Salad bars? Yeah, or we could put Salad Vinny, bars. Vinny, I, I think for a whole no, year. No, 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 no. Vinny's just not. It's been over the past two months, it's been like that. It was two months in the November and December, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. right, right, right. No, we'll put Salah on the left. So put Salah on the left. I'd say Messi on the right. Now no, make it fun. Come dude. on, I'm going yes, to Kiesa. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Kiesa, 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 Kies
the year yeah, he had was pretty yes. No, I mean, he, he's not team of the year. I, I was saying I love Kizzy. Okay, so we gotta figure out the right winger and stuff. Okay, I'm not saying I wanna Messi. say I wanna say Di Maria. No, we're not doing He won the Copa America. Let's he said Messi deserves it. <laughs> Who says it has to be another Messi? Right, then we'll, we'll take we'll take Messi. Oh, well, well, I mean, you, 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 you said make it fun. You said make it fun. I did say make it fun, but no one wants to make it fun. If we're gonna make it like no, we're not about Mbappe. Don't think about no, get Mbappe. Mbappe stinks, man. I'd say yeah, Mbappe is horrible. Trash. We're trash blurs, watch it. Ever. Um, <laughs> right way. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll say Messi because he did win the Copa. All right, we'll go Messi. All right, go Messi. So that that's it for our team, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Catch us next week. NLF episode four. Like and subscribe to this video. I'm down below. Yeah, peace. Comment down below. Yeah, peace. Comment down below. <laughs> team of the year down below. Yeah, let's hear it. Peace out, guys.